What's going on everyone? My name is Impulse and today I have a tutorial for you for an infinite villager breeder that requires zero redstone to build. It's going to produce up to 12 villagers per hour and can also double as a passive carrot or potato farm. But before I jump into the tutorial, let me explain how this works. And if you want to jump right to this tutorial, there's a timestamp on screen right now that you can go ahead and just forward the video and get right into it. There's also a link in the description to a world save if you want to use that for reference as well. So how does this work? Well, with the Minecraft Java update to 1.14, villager breeding mechanics changed quite a bit. Villages now rely on beds to control the population instead of doors like it did in the past. So in order to get our villagers to breed, they need to believe that there's a bed available for their offspring. In addition to that, the villagers also need to have food in their inventory to be willing to breed, and they need to be able to sleep in a bed themselves. Once they breed, they'll consume some of the food in their inventory, meaning that eventually they're going to run out of food and stop breeding. This design makes sure the breeder villagers always have food in their inventory by having a farmer tend to a farm and share the food with them. For this design, I'm using a carrot and potato farm designed by Logical Geek Boy to supply the breeders with that food. There's a link in the description for his video on that. I suggest you check that out. And for the breeding cell, I've used a concept by Rayworks, which allows the breeders to sleep and return to a one by one cell on top of a fence post, which is going to ensure that the babies are separated out and not claim a bed in the village for themselves. So by connecting these two designs together, what we have here is an infinite villager breeder, which is going to produce 12, up to 12 villagers per hour. And since the breeders receive more food than they can actually hold, you can store that food for yourself and have yourself a nice little passive carrot and potato farm. So now that I've explained the mechanics, let's go ahead and just jump into the tutorial. All right, so let's get started. First thing you want to do is mark out the area that you're going to build this in. And you need about a 21 by 21 space. You can see it's kind of in a diagonal or a diamond pattern here. And also a 3 by 3 area that's going to be hanging off one of the sides. You can choose which side you want, of course. Doesn't matter. And yeah, whatever works best for you. So this is the space you're going to need to build this farm in. And here's the materials you're going to need to build it. So I'll just let you take a screenshot or freeze that right there. There'll also be a list in the description of all the materials you will need. Of course, you're going to need your dirt for farmland. Glass is kind of nice to have so you can see in, but these could be solid if you like. A few solid blocks, doesn't have to be iron blocks, of course. Some lighting, so this could be either glowstone or sea lanterns, your choice there. Some slabs, of course, you can pick whatever slabs you want, whatever stairs you want. All these are interchangeable, but you do need to make sure uh, that you do use stairs in this case, and you'll see why in a minute. Some beds and your fence posts that they're going to stand on top of. A chest to be able to store the extra carrots or potatoes. So you're going to need some either carrots or potatoes. You can choose what type of farm you want to make there. Water and, of course, a hoe so that you can turn, you can till the farmland there. And then you're going to need some villagers. So obviously, if you're in survival, you're not going to have spawn eggs. You can just snag some villagers from a near, nearby village and uh, either minecart them or boat them in or, or water away. However you want to bring them over into the breeding cell is up to you. But do make sure that uh, you, you grab ones that aren't locked to a profession. It's kind of nice to have them professionless. And then we'll take a third one inside and we'll turn them to a farmer. So he also needs to make sure he's not locked to a profession so that we can turn him into a farmer as needed there. So those are your starting materials. And now we will start to build this thing. Okay, so I like to start from the center of the farm here, and we're going to start with putting a slab down. And then from there, we're just going to go nine out on each side. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then you can kind of make a T pattern off of that and just do that in all four cardinal directions. Once you have that done, go ahead and make the diagonals. And so you just run along the diagonal here, just connecting the corners of the T together. And when you're done, you should have something that looks just like this. Then go ahead and fill in the rest of the area all with dirt. Once all your dirt's in, it should look something like this. Next up, we're going to start putting in our lighting. So you want to just go off of the, the corner here. It's basically where that T was, just off the edge of the T. And then you skip one block and you put one there as well. And then you do that on all four sides. And when you're done, it should look just like this. Next up, we're going to start putting in our water. Let's start by waterlogging this slab that's in the middle there. 
And then what we're going to do is place some stairs right off this edge right here. So in between these two lights. And we're just going to place those stairs all the way around. And then on the outside of the stairs, we're going to place some trap doors. And these are going to help hold in some water and kind of make this thing look good. Keep the shape of it. Once the trap doors are in, we can go ahead and waterlog all the stairs on all four sides. And at this point, our dirt is ready to be tilled into farmland. Once you've turned all your dirt into farmland, you should see it starting to get hydrated all the way through. So by the end of this, all this land should be hydrated. If not, you missed a spot of water in one of these stairs maybe or in the middle. So make sure you do that. And I'm going to go ahead and start planting the potatoes now. I'm going to do potatoes this time just to prove that potatoes work as well. And we'll plant all the farmland. Now, if you don't have all the potatoes necessary in order to plant all the farmland, that's okay. You can just go ahead and plant what you have. And when those grow, the farmer that you put in here will go ahead and replant those. And eventually, it may take some time, but eventually this whole thing should get filled up. All right, now that all the potatoes have been planted, let's go ahead and go back to the center here. Let's put our composter right in the center, and we're going to put a sea lantern on top of that. Or you can put glowstone, of course, if that's the lighting block you're using. And then that will prevent the villager from trying to jump up into the compost or anything like that. And then I like to do this around the outside just to make things kind of symmetrical here. But let's put some solid blocks just kind of in these spaces where it just kind of feels like they're missing a block. And we're going to actually use these anyway to build on top of with glass next. You do want to leave this 3x3 three three area though. You don't want to fill this in with solid blocks. So we're going to leave that out. All right, now that that's done, let's go ahead and start filling in our glass here. So you can just go two up on all the sides just like this. All right, once you have all the glass in, it should look just like this. Next, we're going to start building our breeder cell here. And so what you want to do is just come two blocks out. And that's just going to be a temporary block right there. And we're going to go ahead and place the trap doors on the top part of the block and close those all up like this. Then we want to build some glass up right here. So go three high and then knock out the bottom one there. And finally, we're going to put a trap door right on the top of this second glass block there. And that's going to prevent the farmer villager from being able to actually get out of here and get into the breeding system. Now let's go ahead and take out that temporary block and dig out this three by three underneath these trap doors. This is going to be where our beds go. So let's go ahead and on each corner, place a bed down just like this. All right, so it should then look like this. We're going to go ahead and knock out that block there. And this is going to be where we put our fence post. And now we're going to dig underneath this guy. If you built it into the ground or on level with the ground, you're going to have to dig this out. And we want to not have blocks directly underneath the bed. So let's just go ahead and dig this out. Also, we want to make sure this fence post isn't connecting to anything. And that creates the gap for the babies to fall through. All right, so once you dig down a little bit and cleared some room, we can go ahead and build the glass tube that we're going to store these guys in, at least temporarily. And at the bottom of that, you're going to want to put your chest in your hopper to be able to collect those, in this case, potatoes. And if I can get to the back of this, there we go, build that back up and we can go ahead and put glass right on top of that chest and open that up so we can still access it. And then also just to make sure we don't create a gap for the babies to get out, we're going to go ahead and place some slabs right on top of the glass right there. Now at this point, you're ready to bring your villagers in. And so you need to get your first two villagers into the middle of these trapdoors here. So we're just going to spawn them in there. Of course, you can rail them over and just kind of dump them in off of a minecart or something like that, or boat them over or however you want to do it. Um, there's many ways to move villagers around and they're always fun. But there we go. We got two professionalist villagers just chilling in this breeding chamber. And then finally, we're going to need to bring one into the farm itself. And he should pick up on the composter and turn into a farmer. There he goes. So at this point, you are pretty much done. It's a waiting game from here for the crops to grow up and for him to get enough inventory to start throwing to these guys. Of course, if you want to help things along, you can, of course, if you have potatoes on hand, you can throw them to the farmer. And uh, if he <laughs> cooperates, he'll come pick them up. We'll see. There he goes. And of course, you can throw the potatoes to your breeding villagers as well to kind of help them get started. So if you can spare, you know, about eight stacks of potatoes or carrots, then that should do it. And then once they get those, there they go. Already ready to breed. And we should see our first baby villager being born in here. Let me dig this out a little bit, have a little stairway down to it. All right, there we go. So you're probably going to want to take these villagers and escort them somewhere else. Some one thing you want to be careful of 
is that you don't allow them to get out and claim these beds. You never want to give them access to these beds. Uh, otherwise, this won't be an infinite breeder. So it, it's a nice idea to kind of take them somewhere else. And what I'm going to do here is basically just dig a tunnel for them to take. And, and you can go underground, you can go above ground in, in a glass tube or however you want to do it, of course. And let me just show you some concepts here on a good way to do this. And we'll go ahead and fill this in with glass just for now so you can see better. So what you'd want to do is take your water and we're going to need some signs here. And also I'm going to grab a cobblestone wall and I'll show you why here in a second. So we'll go ahead and bust this glass out right there. We'll make sure that he can't get out anywhere. And we're going to place some water right there. That's going to allow him to flow over. In fact, if we want, we can take that out as well just to help things along. And then what we're going to do is replace this block in the ground with our fence. And that's going to pull him up a little bit because we need to, in order to extend this, we need to then have the water at the head level here. So we'll put some water in right there. And what that's going to do is because he's only one block tall, this fence right here, this wall is going to bring him up just a little bit and that way he can extend on. And of course, I, I'm a little bit too tall for this, so I'm going to keep going. But yeah, you can basically just repeat this tunnel process. It's getting really dark in here over and over again. And uh, you can carry him as far away as you like with these water canals. And that is basically it. Pretty simple to build and you are done. So a couple things I want to mention just real quick. And that is you probably want to put a roof on this because if this villager or these two villagers were to get struck by lightning, they would turn into witches and most likely despawn and, and you'd be very sad. So make sure you cover this whole thing with a roof or you can just build this whole thing underground. Villages don't need light or you know sky access to anything anymore. So you can do the whole thing underground which would make it safe from the storms as well. Also, you need to make sure that the game rule for mob griefing is true. You need to, these mobs, basically this farmer needs to be able to harvest these plants. And if the mob, uh, if mob griefing game rule is set to false, they're not able to harvest the plants and therefore they won't be able to throw them to the villagers to breed. So yeah, that game rule has to be, has to be true. And finally, I kind of mentioned it before, you want to make sure that these beds no other villages or villagers are able to get to and claim for their own. We need to make sure that at least two of these beds are unclaimed so that these guys think they need to populate it. And that's how the breeding works. So with this design, you can get up to 12 villagers per hour. And that is if you're actually sleeping through the night. So every five minutes, they're able to breed. They got a five minute cooldown on breeding. So every five minutes, they're able to breed, um, but they will not breed at night. So to get 12 in an hour, you'll need to sleep through all the nights as soon as it becomes dark. Or if you don't sleep through the nights and you just let it run, you're going to at least get six uh, per hour. And there you go. That is it for this tutorial. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button. If you're not subscribed, make sure you do that before you go. And with that said, I will see you guys again in the next one. Have a good one, everyone.